Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at our third example out of our 9.1 lesson, all about parametric equations in calculus. And this is our last example that won't really have a lot to do with calculus, but it's going to again, again set the stage for the body of knowledge that we need with parametrics in order to pull off some of these calculus exploits. So let's take a look at no mo parameter. So as you can see here, it says that many times when a parametric equation is given, we wish only to sketch the general shape of the plane curve. In that case, we might wish to eliminate the parameter to create a rectangular equation. And I, I want to set the stage here by going right into example three and, and seeing the direction, sketch the curve described by these parametric equations. And I really want to make it clear that we're going to have trouble trying to sketch these, uh, this equation using uh, the parametric approach. And the reason is because, especially for the x equation, if we try to plug in certain numbers for t, like uh, I don't think 0 is a big problem, and I don't know if we want to try 1 or 2, but 3 won't be a big problem. But down the road, I mean, you can just see all of the numbers here that are just going to create headaches for us because we can't compute square root of 2 and square root of 3 and square root of 5 and square root of 6 so easily. So we can opt for a slightly different approach and that would be to eliminate the parameter and when you do that sometimes you have to alter the domain and that seems to be the trickiest part but let's take a look at this problem and see if it makes sense. Once again Here's our parametric equations, x and y. t is defined to be greater than uh, negative 1. And I can understand why. If you look at this denominator of the x equation, having a t value that would be uh, less than negative 1 will cause quite a bit of problems. And for that matter, having a t value equal to negative 1 will cause problems. So how do you eliminate this parameter? Well, it basically is just suggesting that you take one of your two equations and solve for t. Now, typically the better equation to use might be this x equation. And so when we go ahead and we cross multiply here in this x equation, we end up with this result here. And we're going to keep moving through this solution and see where it takes us. Now, why did I pick the x equation? Well, one reason is I really felt that it was easier to solve for t here because of the instance of 1t. But the other reason why we want to avoid the, the y equation often is that if you solve for this, then you need to make sure that you place the result in the other equation and manipulate it and solve for the new y, or else you won't have the rectangular form that we want. It's really advantageous when you can to solve for t in the x equation so that you can put that result into the y equation. You'll see what I mean here. So the next thing I'm going to do is get the square root all alone. So I'm going to divide by x. I will then square both sides. And at this point, I have one step left, and that is to subtract 1 over to the right side. And once I do, we have our t all by itself. Now what? Well, as I said before, revisit your other equation and replace all the t's that you see in that equation with the t that you just found. And so we have kind of a mess here, right? And maybe I'll even center this y equal just a little bit better. But that's OK, because we can work on this. We can simplify this. We can get a common denominator among the numerator. That's fairly easy to do. We can go ahead and cancel these two terms in the denominator. Fairly simple to do. And then moreover, we can see that these x squareds, once you multiply by the reciprocal, are just going to cancel. And lo and behold, mission accomplished. You now have your equation written as a rectangular equation, y equal 1 minus x squared. Now here's the tricky part. 
if we try to graph y equal 1 minus x squared in its entirety, that would be an upside down parabola that would look something like this. But I don't think that we want to graph that entire upside down parabola because we have a domain restriction. If you remember back to the original parametric equation, we were told that t has to be greater than or equal, or just greater than, I should say, negative 1. So we have to think about what role does that play in determining what x is going to be. And so if we really look at this x, it's definitely going to be hindered. In fact, we can't ever get a negative value for that x because there's no way that 1 over the square root of t plus 1 can be negative. And moreover, I don't think that x can take on a 0 value because the numerator being 1. But it's very possible that that x could take on some very small number close to 0 if t was something like negative 0.9999999 which would be allowed according to our restriction there. So for that reason, we're going to say that the x value would have to be strictly positive. That has an impact when you sketch the rectangular form of this equation, because you would have to put your open circle up here where x cannot strictly be 0, and then your upside down parabola would look something like this, right? If you let x be 1, y is 1. If you let x be 2, y is negative 3. And that's about as many points as we could probably sketch, given our, our window here. And then we have to deal with the orientation. And I'm going to tell you, the orientation is the trickiest part of this problem. And here's the reason why. If you want to start with a very typical value for t, maybe 0, think about what we're dealing with here. And I'm going to make a little chart over here off to the side. If we were to let the t be 0, you can see that you're going to get 1 over the square root of 1, which is 1, and you're going to get 0 over 1, which is 0. So the point 1, 0, which certainly is on our curve, is going to correspond to t equals 0. But if you move forward into the future and let t be, let's say, 1 or 2 or how about 3, because it's a little easier to compute, we get 1 over the square root of 4, which is 1 half, and then 3 over 3 plus 1, which is 3 quarters. And while that point isn't necessarily highlight on our curve, we could find it right about there, I would say, and that's the point that would correspond to t equal 3. And so we can only assume that the time or t equal 1 and 2 would be somewhere in between those, and if you just look at the order of things, we are headed this direction. Certainly not what you would have expected. Let's take a look at this from a graphical standpoint and see just how much truth there is to that thinking. So here we go. I have taken the opportunity to go ahead and sketch the parametric equation on the TI Inspire CX CAS2 calculator. And we do see that uh, half of the downward opening parabola on our screen, but we don't really see the orientation yet. But as soon as I use the path plot, we're going to be able to take a little bit better look. So I'm going to go into my menu trace and choose the path plot. And of course, this is parametric. So I'll click on that. And then we can just hit the animation button. And we see that that point is coming from down south. And it is moving towards what seems to be that point <clears throat> zero 01. But as we just sit here and talk and view this, you'll notice that we're very slowly getting towards that point zero 01. And in fact, we may never reach that point because of the fact that it being undefined. We can only get closer and closer to it. But at least we have definitely shown you that the orientation of this graph is the way that we depicted it on the pencil and paper version of this problem. 
it's got kind of an interesting way to look at orientation and it, this wraps up our preliminary videos just about parametric equations in general and we want you to join us for the remaining videos for this particular topic that will get into how we can uh, use calculus in a parametric equation world so definitely check those videos out i might just sit here and wait and see where this point goes we thank you for joining and we'll see you next time hmm.